change this by clicking on custom and change it to stereo. It's a mouse click. It has to be done manually for every project. You don't have to do it when you start. You just have to do it. But otherwise, you're going to be looking at a surround mix. You're going to wonder why there's four, five more things bouncing up and down in the audiometers than you expected. So set it to stereo. 48K, best choice generally, unless you really understand audio, which excludes 90% of the video editors in the world. So we'll just leave that to 48K. And the render format of Apple ProRes 422 is really actually a good choice. When you understand the differences, there are reasons to pick the others, and when you can define that to me with a straight face, you can select them. <laughs> and then click OK. We've now created a new project. There are two basic categories of effects inside Final Cut. And I'm, by using Final Cut, I'm meaning Final Cut 10. In Final Cut 7, there are three categories. There are text effects, there are filter effects, and there are motion effects. In Final Cut 10, there are two. There are built-in effects, and there are clip effects. These are roughly analogous to, but not the same as, motion effects are built-in, and filter effects are clip effects. In the past, when we wanted to color correct a clip, and I will get to this, I promise, I think, maybe, but the, a built-in effect means that I don't have to apply anything to a clip. A built-in effect is always there. Let me give you an example. I select this clip, I'm going to just grab this range. By the way, I could be playing this clip, hit the space bar, I'm now playing the clip, the letter I sets it in in real time while watching it, the letter O sets it out while watching it in real time, space bar stops, space bar plays. I've now set a range for this clip, I want to edit it down to the timeline. There are four, four keyboard shortcuts. The letter E doesn't append edit, it always adds it to the end of your sequence and regardless of where your playhead is, every sequence starts at the beginning of the timeline. None of these accidental, oops, I've got a five second gap at the top that I forgot to pay attention to because I wasn't paying attention to where my playhead was and now all of my timing is screwed up and it's the time to deliver the show and I'm five seconds short and I think I'm going to walk in front of a bus. None of that, it's gone. The next kind of an edit that we have and we'll just drag across here and select a range. I can drag it or I can use the letter I or I can use the letter O. Is we can do what's called, let's do another edit, the letter E. I'm going to use the upward arrow key, command, sorry, shift Z. I get excited about this stuff. Shift Z does the exact same thing inside whatever this program is called, Final Cut 10, as it does inside Final Cut 7. It fits inside the timeline. It's really hard to see the pictures. Pictures are really cute. I got a lot of audio here, but there's no audio. So I go down to the switch in the low right corner, click the switch, turn off the, um, I have, I can see all audio. I can see mostly audio, 50% audio, 50% picture, 25% audio, 75% picture, all picture, no audio or lozenges. <laughs> I like lozenges. So notice that I put my playhead here. I put my playhead where there is no edit point. I'm going to select this clip. I'm going to click and drag across uh, the letter I, spacebar to play. I forget that. Control D. I can open up, no, D. Control D. Shift Z. Go up to here, select the clip. With the clip selected, if you type Control D as in David, down here the timeline window opens up and you just simply type. I want this to be 4 seconds, 15 frames, hit the enter key and I've now set the duration of that clip to 415. So I can set the in and the out with the I and the O, I can use it by dragging a range, I can use it by setting an in and typing a duration. Does this start to sound familiar to the kind of effects, the power that we've had in, of course, it's the same thing as Final Cut 7, it's just different. Again. <laughs> Notice, notice that I've got my playhead in the middle of the clip. If I type the letter E, watch what happens at the end of the sequence in two, one, woof. It adds the clip to the end of my sequence regardless of where my playhead is parked. Shift, uh, Command Z to undo. Shift Z to get this to scale. Put it in the middle of the clip. If I type this second, by the way, this does a, a append edit. This is the insert edit button. Keyboard shortcut is the letter W. The letter W breaks the timeline, forcing everything down, does an insert edit the way that F9 always did, except instead of being F9, because we don't have access to the function keys anymore, they moved it from F9 to the letter W. Same function, works at the playhead, same concept. One of the new concepts is called a connected clip. To do that, I'm going to grab this uh, jump here. 
I'll take the entire clip and click this third button. And when I click it, it now creates a link down here. And this link means that wherever I grab this clip, the other clip moves with it. Well, except I want this clip to be picture in picture. So I select the clip. Controls for effects are based up here. When I click this, controls for effects are based up here. When I click this, I now can grab a clip, same way we could inside the whatever it's called, the canvas inside Final Cut uh, 7. I grab a dot. I can now scale it or hold the shift key down. Oh, sorry. If I grab a corner, it automatically scales and retains the aspect ratio. If you don't want to retain the aspect ratio, you can grab it and drag it backwards and forwards. Click, hold, and drag. You drag it up. There's a switch up here. You want to see title and action safe. You can see title and action safe. I've got that placed up against the corner of action safe. I've got crop controls here. If I select crop, I can crop in and make it smaller. Cropping. Uh, the, problem, the problem I've got is my thumbs are too, too fat for the mouse. So if I had a, a mouse on here, it would make my life simpler. It would help also, Larry, if you set it to crop. That would be useful anyway when you cropped it. But, so we can adjust the size of the image by clicking on this first. We can crop the image by clicking on this one. And we can distort the image, corner pinning, if you remember what that was, where we used the distort function inside uh, Final Cut 7. Rather than have to go to the Motion tab and double-click and scroll down, all that functionality is based right down here in these three buttons. And that quickly, I've created a picture-in-picture. Picture. And notice it cuts into the picture, except I want it to fade in. OK, here, weirdness ensues. Because <laughs> if I click on the very beginning of the clip, by the way, this is very cool for those of you that are are not red, green, colorblind, you're going to love this. Notice that when I click on the edit point, it's red. That means there's no handles at the beginning of the clip. If, on the other hand, I grab the clip and I shorten it, I'm just going to grab the end of it and drag it up to here. Notice that handle is yellow. I've got handles where the edit, is, where the edit point is yellow. I don't have handles where the edit point is red. Have you ever tried to put a dissolve on an edit point where there's no handles and you wonder why your life is suddenly passing in front of your eyes and not life as you get, well this solves the, an the answers the question. There's no handle there, you fool. Don't put a dissolve there. <laughs> Trimming. Uh, uh, Michael's going to go into this, otherwise I'm going to get so hung up. But we can slip this, we can slide it, and Michael's going to show you how and give you all the details and give you all the keyboard shortcuts. And there's a couple of very cool keyboard shortcuts that I know he knows i just make him nervous because he's going to show you some hidden secret keyboard shortcuts inside Final Cut 10 that make trimming a whole lot cooler. Anyway, picture in picture, I want to add a dissolve. In order to add a dissolve, you have to create what's called a connected storyline. Connected storyline can be one or more clips. To do that, select a clip or group of clips, go up to clip, and say create storyline. Notice there's now a bar over this clip. You click on the beginning edit point, type Command T, it adds a transition, which is always a crossfade. It's always one second long. You can change it in, in uh, hundreds of a second. Uh, inside uh, the preference window, you grab the edge of this, you drag it, works exactly the same as Final Cut 7. And now when I play this, it cuts and fades into, and then plays our picture in picture, and fades back out again. This is a built-in effect. We can adjust the picture in picture, by clicking on this I command, when you click on it, it opens up the inspector. The inspector is exactly the concept we got used to inside Motion, in DVD Studio Pro, in Live Type. The inspector is where you make changes. Keyboard shortcut is Command 4. Command 4 opens the inspector. When I click on the video tab, these are the built in effects color correction, transformation, which includes things like Position, which we used to call scale, uh, center. Rotation, which we used to call rotation. Scale, which we used to call scale. So already some of this stuff is looking familiar to us. Cropping controls, you click on show. You can dial in exactly how much you want this crop. By the way, when you've got a slider like this, if you hold the option key down, you're going to move one unit at a time. This is exactly the same way the option key works inside motion. If you don't, you click here, the slider moves in a big way. If you hold this option key down, you move exactly one increment at a time. 
As we scroll farther down, distortion or corner pinning, stabilization, this is what we called smooth cam in Final Cut 7. Rolling shutter didn't exist in Final Cut 7, but it corrects for the problem of DSLR footage as you're panning and all of a sudden all of your vertical lines are leaning sideways. Spatial conform, <laughs> I'm surprised it's that much. Uh, spatial conform. <laughs> what spatial conform does is if you have an image, it will give you three choices. You can bring the image in in whatever size you want, or you can have it fit the frame, leaving letter boxing or pillar boxing based upon the shape of the image itself. That's the default. Or you can have it fill the frame. Here, it distorts the image, stretching the image, so it fully fills the frame. The default setting is bring it in, letter box or pillar box as necessary, but don't change the aspect ratio of the graphic. You have three choices under spatial conform. We also have blend modes, and here they store all the, they stole all the blend modes. We used to call them composite modes. These are the composite modes from motion. So we've got almost three times more composite modes in motion than we do inside, sorry, three times inside Final Cut 10 as opposed to Final Cut 7. And the opacity setting is also controlled in here, so if you wanted to fade that back and forth, Think of the built-in effects as essentially a high-power version of what we used to have inside the Motion tab. And you don't have to apply anything. You just simply have to select the clip, go to the inspector, and inside the inspector, you go to the Video tab, and all that power is available to you. We have a second kind of effect, which is called a clip effect. And those are accessed from the browsers down here. Here, they've taken lots of little bits. They took all the filters from Soundtrack Pro, Pro, those filters are in here, and they added more. They took color looks from color, those looks are inside here. And the way it works is, let's say, um, uh, let's see, Shift Z, and let's pick, let's pick a shot that's got some color in it. Let's just delete that clip. Let's delete this. By the way, click on the bar above the connected storyline. Replace that. It exists, by the way, but you can only replace from the beginning or the end of a clip. Michael's going to talk about that. I've got, got to stop talking about what Michael's going to talk about. He's never going to talk to me again. Anyway, what, what, oh yes, this thing right here. Edit this down, the letter E. Add it to the end of the sequence. Notice we've got some color here. I want to... All right, now we've got some color there. All right, so we go to the effects window. These are browsers. Effects are stored inside browsers. The keyboard shortcuts that allow us to edit the letter E to, to uh, append, the letter W to insert, the letter Q allows us to do a connected edit only affect clips which are inside the event browser. Whenever you're working with a browser over here, a media browser, an effect browser, you have to either drag it or double click it. If the clip is selected before you select the effect, and here what's cool about this, I'm just simply skimming across here, and I say, oh, there's an aged paper look. I can see what it looks before I even apply it to my clip. It's being applied in real time. I can see exactly what it looks like by skimming back and forth. And I say background squares. All right, well, that looks weird. This is kind of, you know, kicky. We'll do that. I could simply click, hold, and drag it on top of the clip, or because the clip is selected first, you just double click it and it automatically applies it. That orange bar means it has to be rendered. If you want to see the rendering, click this little clock thing here. It opens up the background task window and it shows you how long the rendering is going to take. You don't have to, but for those of you that don't feel fulfilled unless you know what the computer is doing, You go right here, click on this little clock thing, and it shows you what's going on. And notice that the render bar disappears, but even though it has to render, I'm going to drag across here, and notice I can still see my effect. It's figuring it out. I don't have to wait for it to play. And if I hit the space bar, I'm playing something that hasn't been rendered in real time and watching it at the same time. Now, you've got to admit, that's cool. 